Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. This World Environment Day. This World Environment Day. This World Environment Day. Tell the world why it's time for nature. It's time to show our leaders why nature matters. Tag your friends, government leaders, and companies. To invite them to be part of the solution. We will not bag down. Until we see real and lasting change. What do we want? For me, nature is medicine. Nature is inspiration. You are never too little to make a difference. And it's time for nature because... Some of us have been using Mother Earth like she was their own personal ATM. We can save our nature, our mother, together. Nature is love, nature is life. And it's time for nature. It's time for nature. Llegó la hora de la naturaleza. And it's time for nature because we need a home for our future generations. Hola, soy María Juliana Ruiz, primera dama de la República de Colombia. Quiero resaltar nuestro maravilloso territorio y su valor en la conmemoración del Día Internacional del Medio Ambiente. Colombia es un lugar mágico, con una biodiversidad que nos hace únicos en el mundo. Contamos con nevados, cordilleras, bosques tropicales, desiertos, llanuras, páramos e islas en el Pacífico y en el Caribe. Tenemos más de 50.000 especies endémicas, somos el primer país en diversidad de aves y orquídeas y contamos con más de 30.000 humedales. Albergamos en la Amazonía una fuente inigualable de agua y oxígeno para el planeta. Por eso, es momento de actuar, cuidando nuestros hábitos, mejorando nuestra forma de relacionarnos con la vida, con los recursos naturales, con nuestros semejantes. Cuidemos el agua, que es un tesoro invaluable de nuestro planeta. Cuidemos la tierra, que es cuna de nuestro alimento. Cuidemos el aire, que nos da el aliento para la vida. La situación mundial nos invita a unirnos en un mundo que ya cambió. Debemos actuar en conjunto, apoyándonos. Solo así generaremos un impacto real y positivo en nuestras comunidades. Hagamos de este desafío una gran oportunidad. Soy Marta Lucía Ramírez, Vicepresidente de la República de Colombia. Es un privilegio para mí poder enviarles hoy un mensaje reconociendo todo lo que Colombia puede aportar a la humanidad desde sus ecosistemas, su extraordinaria biodiversidad y nuestros activos ambientales. Así también como desde el compromiso que tiene nuestro país con la conservación y el uso sostenible de todos los activos ambientales. Colombia es un país megadiverso. Ocupamos los primeros puestos a nivel mundial en biodiversidad por kilómetro cuadrado. Tenemos el 10% de la fauna y de la flora mundial. Nuestro país tiene la mayor, tiene la mayor variedad de aves y de mariposas del mundo. Del mundo. Y, es y es además uno de los pocos países del mundo con costas sobre el océano Atlántico y sobre el Océano Pacífico, que junto con nuestros ríos nos convierten en una de las potencias mundiales en recursos hidrobiológicos. El gobierno de Colombia, con el liderazgo del presidente Iván Duque, ha promovido dos acciones claves que queremos visibilizar hoy. Primero, el Pacto de Leticia, firmado por Colombia, Perú, Bolivia, Ecuador, Brasil, Surinam y Guyana, para proteger el Amazonas, esa selva amazónica que tiene realmente la mayor biodiversidad del mundo y fortalecer la acción coordinada de todos nuestros países contra la deforestación. La segunda iniciativa de nuestro gobierno es la firma del Acuerdo de Escazú, mediante el cual fortaleceremos el acceso a la información, la protección de líderes ambientales, la participación pública y el acceso a la justicia de todos los ciudadanos en asuntos ambientales. La fragilidad de la humanidad frente a la pandemia del virus nos pone de presente la vulnerabilidad que tenemos respecto al cambio climático y nos debe comprometer cada vez más en el cuidado del medio ambiente que es el cuidado de nuestras vidas y de las vidas de quienes vendrán después. 
Muy buenos días, soy Julieta del Río. Good morning, my Julieta del Río. And we will be connected during the next 90 minutes in this opening ceremony of the World Environmental Day with the greeting of Dr. Antonio Gutierrez, General Secretary of the United Nations Organization, the presence of the President of the Republic of Colombia, Dr. Iván Duque Marquez. Mrs. Svenja Schutzen, Minister of the Environment of the Re Federal Republic of Germany. Mrs. Inka Anderson, Executive Director of the United Nations Program for the Environment, UNEP. Mr. Ricardo Lozano, Minister of Environment of Colombia, and our special guests. We extend our greeting to the general audience around the world, and of course, in Colombia's world, that is following us via streaming through the page of uh, the Presidents of the Republic, www.presidents.w.go. And the World Environmental Day that is generating live transmission worldwide. You can also connect and participate through social networks, the Presidency of the Republic, the United Nations Program for the Environment, and the Ministry of Environment of Colombia following the hashtags, hashtag for nature and hashtag for, for la naturaleza in Spanish. World Environment Day is a traditional date in the calendar of uh, the United Nations for the Environment. Since 1974, the 5th of July has become, 5th of June has become a plat word platform that gathers government, citizens, celebrities, and companies around a relevant environmental issue for humanity. Social networks of the Presidency of the Republic and the program of the United Nations and the Ministry of the Environment. We want to celebrate this very important day. Nature is sending us a message. We will hear our anthem right now. For the celebration of this World Environment Day, we have prepared an agenda of international scope 
where we highlight the following segment. The opening ceremony with the President of the Republic of Colombia, Mr. Ivan Duque Marquez, and special guests. The development of global thematic panels with participation of experts, ministers, and recognized, world recognized leaders. These panels will approach the following topics. The Amazon, heart of the planet resiliency, organized by the Humboldt and uh, the environmental. Uh, investigation institute in Colombia, the use of biodiversity and the pandemic of COVID-19 organized by Conservation International. Biodiversity is organized by the mayor's office in Barranquilla, Colombia. Quality of air and health organized by the mayor's office of Medellin in Colombia. Climate change organized by WWF in Colombia and circular economy organized by the University of Los Andes and the World Economic Forum. This celebration is accompanied by pedagogical videos as well as messages from the most important world leaders, activists, influencers, young leaders from communities and representatives of governments that inspire us with their example to increase the awareness of all the citizens in the world on the importance of changing the way we relate with nature. Today is time for nature. We just received the message of his sainthood, Pope Francis, uh, and I will read that now. His Excellency, Mr. President of the Republic of Colombia, Dr. Ivan de Marquez, protection of the environment and the respect to biodiversity of the planet are issues that concern us all. We cannot pretend to be healthy in a world that is ill. To our Mother Earth, our wounds that also bleed in us. Care for the ecosystems requires a vision for the future that does not remain only in the immediate, looking for rapid and easy gain. A look that is loaded with life, that looks for the preservation of the benefit for all. The complete text of the message of Pope Francis can be read on the official page of the celebration of the World Environment Day. Next, we will transmit the message from Mr. Antonio Guterres, General Secretary of the United Nations, with regards to this World Day of the Environment. Me complace enviar un saludo cordial al presidente Duque y al pueblo de Colombia en el Día Mundial del Medio Ambiente. Cada año utilizamos este día para centrarnos en la naturaleza y su valor para la humanidad. Colombia comprende el valor de la biodiversidad. Elogio el compromiso del gobierno de proteger y utilizar de forma sostenible su preciosa flora y fauna, que se encuentran entre las más diversas del mundo y abarcan 3.500 tipos de orquídeas y el 19% de las especies de aves del planeta. Los ecosistemas saludables, ricos en biodiversidad, son fundamentales para la existencia humana. Los ecosistemas sostienen nuestras vidas de muchas maneras, limpiando nuestro aire, purificando nuestra agua y brindándonos alimentos y medicinas de base natural. Ahora bien, en todo el mundo, la naturaleza nos está enviando un claro mensaje. Estamos dañando el mundo natural en prejuicio nuestro. La degradación de los hábitats y la pérdida de biodiversidad se están acelerando en todas las regiones y la alteración del clima está empeorando. Los incendios, las inundaciones, las sequías y las supertormentas son más frecuentes y prejudiciales. Los océanos se están calentando y acidificando, destruyendo los ecosistemas de coral y reduciendo la productividad. Y ahora ha surgido un nuevo coronavirus que socava la salud y los medios de vida en todo el mundo. Para cuidar a la humanidad, debemos cuidar la naturaleza. Es preciso que toda nuestra comunidad global cambie de rumbo. El Día Mundial del Medio Ambiente nos muestra cómo hacerlo. Cada uno de nosotros tiene un papel que desempeñar para poner fin a la pérdida de la biodiversidad y preservar la naturaleza. Todos podemos aprender qué hacer, 
compartir lo que sabemos y actuar para salvaguardar la naturaleza. Repensemos lo que compramos y usamos. Adoptemos hábitos, sistemas alimentarios y modelos empresariales sostenibles. Salvaguardemos los espacios y la vida silvestre que aún existen. Y comprometámonos a forjar un futuro verde y resiliente. En la reconstrucción mejorada posterior de la pandemia de COVID-19, demos a la naturaleza el lugar que le corresponde, haciendo de ella la consideración primordial en nuestra toma de decisiones. Hoy, Día Mundial del Medio Ambiente, ha llegado la hora de la naturaleza. During this opening ceremony of the World Environment Day, we want to especially greet uh, the President of the Republic of Colombia, Mr. Ivan Duque Marquez, Mrs. Inga Anderson, Director of the United Nations Environment Program, Mr. Ricardo Lozano, Minister of the Environment and Sustainable Development from Colombia, Mrs. Svenja Schutzet, Minister of the Environment of the Federal Republic of Germany, who will be accompanied by our special guests. Professor Klaus Schwab, founder and CEO of the World Economic Forum. Mr. Luis Alberto Moreno, president of the uh, Inter-American Development Bank, and Mr. Andrew Sear, president of the World Resources Institute. To all of them, we give the most warm welcome, and we want to thank them for their valuable participation in this evening. We are certain that with their reflections, we will strengthen the message that we want to send to the entire world during this celebration of the World Environment Day. Ladies and gentlemen, next, the President of the Republic of Colombia, Mr. Ivan Duque Marquez. Good morning to all of you and a very special greeting to the Secretary of the United Nations Organization, our good friend Antonio Guterres. I want to greet uh, Ms. Inga Anderson, Executive Director of uh, the UNEP, um, Minister Schulz. Thank you for accompanying us. Thank you for contributing so much to the state. My greeting to Professor Charles Schwab, who is the president of the World Economic Forum. I also want to greet our compatriot, Luis Alberto Moreno, president of the Inter-American Development Bank. I also want to greet Andrew Stern, that uh, is directing the World Resources Institute, um, Minister Ricardo Lozano as well. It is a true honor as president of Colombia to be the host of this very important day for humanity, the World Environment Day. We are at a moment of deep reflection around nature, around climate change, around how we must behave, what should be the ethic of our society to protect the species and ecosystems. There's no doubt that the most complex moment that humanity has experienced in many years is being lived now due to COVID-19. But it is also true that the big topic of our times is our capacity to change our trends regarding climate change and global warming. Climate change brings devastating effects in many ecosystems. Climate change threatens biodiversity. Climate change threatens our glaciers. And of course, it also ends up raising the sea levels that affect sustainability of many coastal uh, areas and the pop many populations. That is why this is the big topic of our times. And COVID-19 has led a lot of people, a large amount of people in the world to be isolated preventively in their homes. We also need to analyze this as an opportunity for reflection. 
as an opportunity to recognize that Mother Earth is speaking to us, to be aware of the importance of pure air, to be aware of how valuable all our species are, to also recognize the tasks we have moving forward in terms of recycling, of reforesting, but also in terms of changing our habits and consolidating a genuine environmental ethic around the world. Colombia receives this World Environment Day with enthusiasm because we are a country that has coast on the two oceans. We are a country that has around 50% of the world highlands. We are a country where 50% of its territory is covered with tropical forests and jungles, and about 30% of our territory is territory in the Amazons. We have perhaps the second largest biodiversity per square kilometer in the world, and additional to all this, our species are an amazing uh, world heritage covered over the years with a fascinating contribution of our indigenous and ancestral people, more than 150. These conditions give us the legitimacy of speaking with passion and love regarding our environmental challenges. And even though we are a country that only represents 0.5 four percent of uh, greenhouse gas emissions we are one of the countries that is more threatened by climate change and what we need to ask ourselves every single day is what should be the behavior of our nations even though we represent only 0.4 percent of greenhouse gas emissions we want to act decidedly with uh, strength so that we can be a reference in the world policy, world environmental policy. And that has been one of the main issues of our government. We have almost two years of having started our administration. And I am pleased that we have commitment with the environment that can be materialized every day. In only two years or almost two years, our country was able to go from having 50 megas of installed capacity of renewable energies to advance in the construction of 2,500 megawatts of renewable energies, where we have eolic and photovoltaic energies. That is one of the highest percentages in a country in Latin America and perhaps of the world in such short time. And to advance in that direction is for us to be able to consolidate for 2050 our complete neutrality in terms of carbon. I also need to say that we want to reach the more faraway communities in Colombia with these types of energies. That is why a community like, like Taraira in the Department of Alpes and a beautiful land accompanied by multiple species, we were able to take energy with uni family solar panel, panels as we did in other places of the territory especially in the north coast of our country. We also consider that clean mobility is a crucial and strategic topic that commits us. And that is the reason why we moved forward the law of electric vehicles with deep incentives so that we also improve our vehicle park, not only individually, but also in cargo. And Colombia wants to lead that transition of clean mobility in Latin America. But additional to these initiatives, we have also proposed to advance 
in planting 180 million trees for August 2022. This year, we have had difficulties, of course, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, but we closed 2019 with 34 million trees already planted, and we will not stop a single day until we achieve our goal. A goal that also allows us to say that we have moved forward the Artemisa campaign to stop deforestation and to provide incentives, a measure that will have to contribute so that every single one as a team, as a nation, can face this adversity that is harming so many territories around the world. We have also been clear in the protection of the Amazons. That is why we promoted the Leticia Pact, a pact that elevates at the level of the presidency in South America, the interest of protecting this lung that is in our territories that belongs to us, but is at the service of humanity. We have advanced so that these measures developed in the Leticia Pact allow us to share information and act in a timely manner, working with the ancestral communities and protecting this live Amazon basin. It also allows us to reaffirm this beautiful program that we have called Colombia Inheritance, uh, which with we have been working with multilateral organisms. And it also motivates uh, me to tell you that in the international plane, we are also not resting. Because just as we advance with the pa Leticia Pact, we also signed the Minamata Agreement. We also advance in the signature of the Escasu Agreement so that the environment, environmental information, the protection of environmental leaders and their participation and deliberation in the national agenda can be clear. That is also accompanied by other measures. A circular economy, public policy, where we recycle and use, where we have the possibility of reconverting and doing it with a mantra, producing, conserving, and preserving and preserving, producing. All of these initiatives are also accompanied by developing collective ethics where we want the classes uh, of democracy and civics in schools can have that big commitment from an early age with a society that can feel not only committed but uh, provoked to work for the protection of the environment. That also leads us to tell Colombians that cities have to become biodiverse cities, as I have spoke with Professor Steer, Klaus Schaub, and Luis Alberto Moreno. The cities that protect species, that protect the quality of air, that protect mobility, and that want to have greater space for uh, collective awareness, independence of natural uh, patrimony. These have to be biodiverse cities. We want to take this throughout the national territory, and I want to thank the committee of cities such as Medellin and Barranquilla, so that in their surroundings, this is a fact. These are commitments of a government, and we want these to transcend to government policies, but they also reaffirm a commitment of Latin America that has to become more present with their voice and their actions because Latin America is biodiverse richness. Colombia is biodiverse richness. And on this World Environment Day, all of us, we will all elevate our voices because we're facing a pandemic. That is true. But our aspiration cannot be going back to how we were before. But coming out of this, being a better society. 2020, they say, is perfect vision. The year 2020 is going to represent for us to reset, as we say, to reset many actions, but it will also serve so that the time where we have been uh, protecting uh, uh, and we have been isolated turns us into societies where we have to come out to protect our air, our richness, 
that we value all our species, that when we meet again, we value our hogs so that we can give, give these hogs back to nature to understand that nature is an asset and not a liability, and that absolutely everybody, we will all look with a clear horizon to meet the sustainable goals and to do it with love for nature. It is time for nature. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. Next, we will speak with our special guests that will be led by the President of the Republic of Colombia. Good morning. We have a very special group, a very important group of guests. We have uh, Inga, the leader of uh, the UNDP, Professor Kashaud, Mr. Schuster, our friend Luis Alberto Moreno, Professor Andrew Steering, Minister Ricardo Lozano. And I want to start, as many say, to try to invite you or provoke you to a deep uh, debate. I want to thank you for giving you this beautiful space. And there is something that I have loved from your participation in the way in which you have led the, the UNDP. You call the nature-based solution, the UNEP. And I would start right there. In the midst of this pandemic of the COVID and the challenges that brings for us defending the environment, what would be that big agenda is? so that we can all find the country, so that the countries can find um, and Mr. President, it's such an honor to have this uh, World Environment Day hosted in beautiful Colombia. I'm only sorry that I could not be here, but let me salute and congratulate you for the speech that you just gave and for the commitment that you and Colombia, uh, Colombians, the citizens of Colombia, have shown uh, to environmental protection. And of course, warm thanks to my fellow panelists for being part of this World Environment Day. Um, and also great thanks to all the authorities in Colombia and to Germany for having helped and enabled that we could take this online. Mr. President, you highlighted some of the most important issues and you asked me around nature-based solutions. You spoke to COVID-19, you spoke to the imperative of biodiversity and species uh, conservation, and you spoke to the important investments that we can make. Let me maybe start with just for us to understand what is happening in terms of uh, nature and what is happening in terms of these uh, pandemic, this pandemic that we are seeing. Because we have for a long time seen zoonosis, Marburg, Nipah, Nipa, Zika, H1N1, Mars, Sir, uh, Sir, uh, Sir, MERS, SARS and Ebola. Each of these diseases transmitted from the animal world and through an intermediary pathogen into the human population. So zoonoses have always existed, but what we are now seeing is a, a greater rapidity with which these uh, diseases come into the human population. In 2016, UNEP came out with a report that said that 60% of these zoonoses, of infectious diseases are derived from zoonoses. And today we know that about 75% of new diseases are zoonotic in nature. So we are seeing, Mr. President, that where you have a balanced biodiversity, an ecosystem with balance, it appears to be that you have fewer zoonoses emerging. And where the ecosystem is out of balance, it appears that you have more. Now, I will be uh, straight and say that we do need more research in this area, but it does make sense that where you have a, a system in balance, there will be other elements and other species to essentially keep things in check. My point here is that last year, IPES, the, the um, international panel that deals the intergovernmental panel on science and policy platform for biodiversity and ecosystem services, came out with a big assessment. And it said that we have about 7.8 million species on this earth. And if we continue as we are, we are set to lose about 1 million species into extinction. And that's clearly not something that we want. And that's why I really salute what you said in your speech. 
because we need to address these five drivers of loss uh, that the IPAS reports highlight. One is uh, land use changes. We're converting too much land from being nature, uh, from being wild spaces into other uses, agriculture, um, urban use, et cetera. We need to be smarter about that. We can't continue to do that because nature is after all our very underpinning of, for the world. Secondly, climate change, and you made those references, climate change is causing these species shifts where species that have an interdependence no longer can rely on that because some species migrate based on lights and some based on heat, and these things get shifted uh, without, uh, without the species being able to adapt. Third, we need to talk about pollution, and clearly, fourth, over-exploitation. We are taking too much out of nature. We can fish the oceans empty and have a great return for a quarter or two on our profits, but that will not yield sustainability. And fifthly, uh, invasive species. So these five drivers are what we want to tackle. And we want to tackle that because nature has this incredible value. It fuels our economic growth and no better place than to understand that than in a beautiful place as Colombia. Half of the global uh, gross, uh, gross domestic GDP depends on nature. We say that 14 of the 17 sustainable development goals are underpinned by nature. So if we think about construction and agriculture and food and beverage, uh, these are all dependent on crops providing the on crops and on pollinators providing the services that we need. But meanwhile, our bee population has about halved and our insects are under, under stress. So we need to be sure that nature that provides us our food, the water we drink, the air we breathe, it purifies our air, it sequesters our carbon, it cools our cities. And we always speak about the impact on Medellin. And I was very pleased to hear about you said about eco cities, um, because where we understand that the green corridor in Medellin has lowered the temperature because of the tree cover. So it cools the cities and it gives us health and it gives us happiness um, when we are in nature. So therefore, Mr. President, that whole thing about investing in nature, investing in nature's infrastructure, those mangroves, those coastal forests, those sea grasses, those coral reefs, um, those solutions, those nature-based solutions, not only are they good for biodiversity, not only are they good for forest products, not only are they good for the temperature and for our food, etc. They're also good for climate and they are surely good for the SDGs. They're good for poverty reduction. And that's, uh, that's clearly what we are all aiming for. And so now when we are seeing these green stimulus, these stimulus packages being rolled out across the world to heighten up our economic uh, engines again, um, post COVID or post the pandemic, there is a real opportunity here making those stimulus packages green, investing in a greener future through job creation, such as uh, tree planting and protection, but also through green infrastructure, green and renewable energy, etc. We understand now that planetary health and human health are not two separate things. We understand that if we are to be healthy, our planet has to be healthy. If we are to deal with zoonosis, we have to deal with ensuring that our intact ecosystems remain that intact. And we have to stop encroaching into the natural world. We have to stop illegal trades of species. We have to adhere to the agreements that we have signed in the Biodiversity Convention and in the CITES Convention and in the Convention for Migratory Species, etc., Because nature has value. And beyond that value of the food and the air and the water and the clothes that we wear and all of that that comes from nature, nature has this deeper value. And I think indigenous peoples teach us very well that value understanding that Mother Earth and our closeness to nature is one from which we are inseparable and is in our heart and our soul. And it has certainly a reflection in each of the world religions because it gives us a sense of ourself. Nature gives us a sense of our history, on our identity. 
and the souls of nations are often embedded in the nature that they, in which nations are based. And it gives us a sense of the promise of tomorrow. So on this World Environment Day, from our side, from UNEP's side, we are deeply grateful to everyone stepping in and stepping up. We remain optimistic, as I do, because we believe that people have listened. They've seen what is possible. And through this COVID crisis, people have sat in, in lockdown and have longed for coming out into nature, have longed to have their children play in nature, have understood that we cannot separate ourselves from the planet on which we live, have listened to the science and adhered to the science, have understood the importance of nature. And we see politicians stepping up and leaning in on nature and on environment and on climate change, on building back better, on green jobs and green infrastructure. So now what we need to do is to take everything that we have learned and commit to that planet, commit to our green planet, commit to World Environment Day and commit to time for nature. So at this point, I think we would like to roll a video about why it is time for nature. Thank you, Mr. President. Now more than ever, we are confronted with the fragility of life in our connection to nature and our planet. Nature is showing us that humankind is on the verge of a breakdown. At least one million plant and animal species are likely to disappear soon. We are on the verge of a mass extinction unlike anything humankind has ever seen. We rely on nature for our energy, for our food, and everything we need. We can fix this, but only if we act now. It's time to ensure we have a future. It's time for nature. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. This World Environment Day. This World Environment Day. Tell the world why it's time for nature. It's time to show our leaders why nature matters. Together or apart. Juntos o separados. Riadam ili na rastayanim. We will unite to make our voices heard. We won't back down. We will not back down. So we see real and lasting change to support this beautiful planet we call home. Y reconectarnos emocionalmente con la naturaleza. Tag your friends and leaders of corporations, companies, and governments. To invite them to be part of the solution. We need the planet. More than the planet needs us. Your planet. My planet. It's time for nature. It's time for nature. It's time for nature. Llegó la hora de la naturaleza. Es un bello video que nos estaba compartiendo también Penuma, Inga, muchas gracias. This was a beautiful video which was shared by UNEP. And I now want to give the floor to Minister Schutze, who is here with us, a minister who, who has been a sponsor and promoter of this very important uh, uh, World Environment Day. I would like to ask you a question acknowledging two very important things, leadership and the role of Germany. First of all, by protecting lives in this pandemic, how have you been able to have a low mortality rate as compared to other European countries? How have you been able to maintain your health care capabilities and to put that in the context of your agenda to graduate? recover productive life with responsibility, with social distancing, but without neglecting something fundamental, which is your awareness about the environment, the individual and collective behavior to recycle, reuse, to do reconversion, and to generate some sort of entrepreneurial and business ethics, which allows us to make big transformations, conserving and producing and producing and conserving. So thank you very much, Minister, for your leadership. And I would like that you will convey to us the lessons from Germany to the world. Good day. Thank you, Mr. President. Thanks a lot. You all know this year's World Environment Day is dedicated to a, a topical environmental issue, an issue with the aim of, of mobilizing people all over the world, and that is biodiversity. And I mean, the, you mentioned it before, Mr. President, the day has come in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic. 
efforts are underway all over the world to contain the pandemic and limit the, the economic and the social impacts. And like many other countries, Germany is doing its best to get through the crisis with health protection measures and economic recovery support. And this is really a very, very special situation. And it is why our meeting and the World Environmental Day are taking place virtually this time, and which of course makes them a little bit more climate friendly. Uh, this pandemic has once again shown us the fundamental importance of ecosystems and their biodiversity for our health and for our economic and social stability. Inga mentioned that before. The, the destruction of the habits of wild animals and illegal wildlife trade are the main causes of the transmission of diseases to livestock and to people. And this danger is growing. More than 500,000 species no longer have sufficient habitat to ensure their long-term survival. Diversity in the plant and animal kingdom is also the key for a stable food and supply and economic development. This year's World Environment Day must send the message that we want to protect and conserve the diversity. And I'm really delighted that Colombia is hosting this year's World Environment Day in, in partnership with UNEP and Germany. We strongly work together and I really like to, to work together with my estimated colleague, uh, Ricardo Lozano. Within the, the International Climate Initiative, Germany and Colombia are cooperating closely in 77 climate and biodiversity projects with support the ambitious uh, climate and biodiversity policy in Colombia. And together, together we can achieve a lot and we need to work together. And this is also applies to tackling major challenges. 2020 should not only be the year of the coronavirus pandemic, it can also be the year in which the world really understands that it is dependent on intact ecosystems. The proof of this would be an ambitious global strategy on biodiversity conservation. We can adapt such a strategy next year. And by doing this, we can put up a global stop sign to halt the loss of species and habitats. I would be really delighted if we could all join forces and use the next CBD Open Ended Working Group meeting in Cali to prepare the new biodiversity framework. We really need it. Thank you. Que Colombia es sede de la Precop de Biodiversidad. Tendremos también. Yeah, Colombia will be the host of the Precop on Biodiversity, and we are committed to this work. And we want to encourage other countries of Latin America so that we can accelerate this agenda for the protection of biodiversity. We have with us Professor Klaus. To have you in this very important event. We're celebrating the World Environmental World Day. Day. And I and have I to have recognize to something that, that we spoke a few months ago when you were talking about the Great Reset and you launched a few days ago that concept. How do we can use 2020 as a way to reset policies and maybe also improve our environmental ethics worldwide? How do we conserve the, wor the work of the private sector the public sector, but also civil society in, in achieving the sustainable development goals, even withstanding that we're facing a, a pandemic. So I want to recognize your leadership, and I hope that the concept that we spoke of, biodiverse cities, can be implemented with the support of the World Economic Forum. And I must say that Colombia is also highly committed to the idea of one trillion trees, and we're going to plant 180 million trees by 2022. So Professor Schwab, if I may summarize what I have just said and in, in a question is, tell us about your initiative of the Great Reset and how do you want to speed this framework for policy action, but also for private sector actions 
within the work that the World Economic Forum does worldwide. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you, Mr. President. It's such a pleasure and honor to be together with you here for this important World Environment Day celebration. I really feel um, that uh, we have to move. And the Great Reset Initiative is a comprehensive mobilization effort to move. Mr. President, but let me first commend you and Colombia for hosting the World Environment Day uh, together with the United Nations in this crucial year. 2020 will be a crucial year for our planet. A healthy environment, of course, is a critical foundation for a healthy society and economy. They are inseparable. And in January this year, at our annual meeting in Davos, uh, with your presence, we focused already entirely on the opportunity and need to shape a more cohesive and sustainable world. That was the theme of the meeting. Calling particularly on all companies to commit to net zero emissions by 2050. And we are fully committed to advancing this agenda in all our activities. Over the past few years and few months particularly, the global context has completely changed. Yet, the importance of building a cohesive, fair and sustainable world has never been more relevant and important. The crisis, Mr. President, that you spoke and we all experience in our daily lives and that we have seen with the crisis with emerging with COVID-19 is like no other crisis in living memory. Yet one thing is clear, when we overcome this crisis, which we will, the pandemic will subside to leave the deficiencies of the old system laid bare inequality, a lack of justice, fragile health care and social security systems, and an unsustainable relationship with our planet. We must see this as a great opportunity for a great reset. This will involve nothing less than the creation of a new social contract, one which honors the dignity of every human being and which expressly fights against any form of racism and discrimination. But economic development needs to be overhauled and needs to be closely interwoven with social progress and environmental responsibility. The fourth industrial revolution, and we are so glad and honored to have a center in uh, Colombia, the so fourth industrial revolution has an important role to play. One of our recent reports identified that 70 percent of the 169 targets underpinning the sustainable development goals could be enabled by existing fourth industrial revolution technology. Yet, we still have to exploit all those opportunities. We must work together to shape this great reset countries, industries, citizens around the world. This is what, in collaboration with His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales, and other leaders like yourself, Mr. President, we aim to do and to create a true mobilization effort, changing mindsets, changing business models, changing government models. As we shape this great reset, we will look to the future, and I think this is important, with a positive and forward-looking vision, working with everybody who can make a contribution to a better world, but particularly with the young generation. So, 
we have with this uh, great reset initiative a unique chance, a unique window of opportunity to build an environmentally, socially, and economically more resilient world for the future. With respect to the role of public-private uh, cooperation, um, Mr. President, public-private partnership, let's focus, and this is the right thing to do now, on biodiversity, the theme of this year's World Environmental um, Day. The World Economic Forum forthcoming Future of Nature and Business Report identifies that 80% of threatened and near-threatened species are endangered by three socio-economic systems, food, land, and ocean use, extractives and energy and infrastructure, and the built environment, our urban systems. These three systems, we should not forget, provide two-thirds of all jobs and represent a third of global economy. The issues of biodiversity and economic resilience are therefore closely interconnected. We need a reset of humanity's relationship with nature to tackle the core drivers of biodiversity loss. Realizing this can only be done through new models of public-private collaboration and partnership, and, of course, leadership. Let me just give an example. The Tropical Forester Alliance, which the Forum has the honor to host, brings together governments like yours, but it brings together also the private and the civil society partners working towards deforestation-free commodities. As part of this global effort, Colombia launched the TFA Colombia Alliance. Mr. President, you mentioned it with the leadership from the ministries of agriculture and environment, along with over 40 multi-stakeholder partners to shape sectoral agreement around beef, dairy, cocoa, palm oil, key drivers of deforestation, but also key economic sectors. Importantly, people have been at the heart of this collaboration, as supporting livelihoods is central to success, and people engagement is central to success. Global deforestation data remains stark, yet we see that through Colombia's leadership in shaping such public-private partnerships, that deforestation has taken a positive turn over the past 12 months. Thank you, Mr. President. And thank you for your support of the One Trillion Trees platform, which we established this year in Davos, to help to conserve, restore, and grow One Trillion Trees and support the UN decade on ecosystem restoration. We have been grateful for the leadership of President Duque, your endorsement, and your commitment, as you just reconfirmed, to plant 100 million native species by 2022 and restore 300,000 of hectares of, Columbia, of Colombia's ecosystem. Moving forward, and that's my plea, we need to see much more partnership like this in other countries, you are serving as a role model, tackling the key drivers of environmental impact around the world. We can learn from Colombia, both how you have done this, but also from the engagement you have achieved from your people. Let me conclude by highlighting one additional dimension. Open inspire engagement to inspire change. And I give an example. This week we are concluding our first virtual global ocean dialogue, which has brought together leaders and people on the topic 
of connecting communities for ocean resilience, innovation and action. As an open dialogue, it has actively engaged and inspired over 3 million people via social media and digital platforms. We must mobilize masses to affect the changes we all want and need. And that's the reason why at our next annual meeting in Davos, we will not only engage decision makers, but our global shapers, the young generation. They are the forward-looking voice. They require from us that we take uh, uh, care of nature. In summary, the Great Reset Initiative is a global mobilization effort to think in new models, societal, government and business, to create a more cohesive, a fairer, a more sustainable and a more resilient world. The Forum, I can pledge it here, as the International Organization for Public-Private Cooperation, will ensure that all those global challenges, particularly in the environmental field, are met with an entrepreneurial and a, collabor a collaborative spirit. Thank you, Mr. President. Muchísimas gracias, Professor Schwab. Le quiero nuevamente expresar, I want to express my gratitude to you, to the World Economic Forum, for the leadership and for also promoting this very important initiative of the Great Reset. Thank you so much, Professor, Professor Schwab. And, Mr. and now I will give the floor to our good friend, Luis Alberto Moreno, the president of the Inter-American Development Bank. I always keep great memories uh, when I was working by your side at the IDB. And I remember an initiative of which you were a pioneer, the SECI initiative, the sustainability, the energy sustainability and climate change initiative. And then to admire the participation of IDB in projects such as the Colombian project to project to protect biodiversity and to commit to circular economy. So my question for you in the context of these pandemics, which is so complex, where the word uncertainty is all over the place, but we have to use our collective intelligence to overcome this threat with our individual commitment, with our individual ethics, with life-changing uh, habits, and to reconcile those objectives, the objective to protect life and health, to continue making progress towards nature-based solutions and to meet the regional goals we have in terms of adaptation and mitigation of climate change. And I would say that the conclusion to all of this introduction is the role of institutions such as the Inter-American Development Bank so that they have the adequate products, the adequate advice and the adequate objectives within this framework of the pandemics and after COVID-19. So welcome, Dr. Luis Alberto Moreno, president of IDB, and thank you for being here. Since from Washington, you are in Washington, we are here in Colombia, but you are with us to share your experiences with the world. Welcome. Thank you very much, President Duque. It's an honor for me, and I want to congratulate you and congratulate Colombia on this initiative and to all the other members of the panel who are here with us. As you said, and here we have the Minister of the Environment of uh, Germany. 15 years ago, when we came to IDB, you were here with us. And thanks to the support of the German government, we began this initiative of climate change and sustainable development. And of course, many things have uh, uh, taken place since then. But in a day such as this, it's very important for all of us to be aware of the fact that while it's true that COVID came as a surprise, climate change has been knocking on our doors for a long time and we have to react quickly. Along these lines, our work at IDB has basically focused not just on creating the set of financial instruments, uh, and I would like to discuss them more in detail later on, but all the work of IDB, regardless of whether it's public or private financing, has to be directed to 
meet the one goal which was established by our shareholders, and that is that we have this year 30% of our credit activity devoted to projects that include sustainability aspects for mitigate climate change. And we accomplished that goal already. And our ambition, of course, is to continue to uh, uh, work in that direction. How do we do it? In many ways. You were saying, for instance, that there are nature-based solutions. I had the opportunity last year to see the huge impact of the hurricane in Bahamas. And there were some areas in Bahamas which were hit by the hurricane and there were more uh, mangroves, natural protection, thanks to the work they did on the coastal areas. And there was less damage in those areas that had the natural protection of nature. And I mentioned this because this is very important to learn about our capability to develop solutions with nature. So we created a capital fund, a, a lab, a laboratory with the natural capital with the support of the French government. And this fund is giving us the opportunity to pilot several projects around this concept. And we want to work with the program you mentioned about Colombia management. And this has to do with the way we can save emissions, massive transportation systems. We have been supporting the development of most of the massive transportation systems in the region. The protection of the thousands of basins we have in Latin America, we have focused on the 25 most important basins from Mexico down to Argentina to create uh, water resources so that we can enrich all of those areas with planting trees and removing populations which are invading many times. The ability to produce water because basically the basins are the water factories of our planet. And finally, all the initiative of uh, Colombian heritage, which we are also supporting, we develop a platform so that all the different actors that want to contribute to this process of Colombian heritage work together around the platform with funding from different areas. And when I speak about financing or funding, in order to be able to accelerate the uh, compliance with the uh, goals that Colombia has established, we have to consider credit resources as well. And this is what we have done in the bank. We have done green bonds emissions in several countries. We are also working on the regulatory frameworks because this involves a lot of risks for financial institutions when they have assets that have CO2 emissions and that will have to change as time goes by. So the regulatory framework is fundamental and your Ministry of Finance has been working together with us. And finally, with regards to this program of Colombian heritage and bio cities that you mentioned, biodiverse cities, the joint effort of science and the local governments is fundamental because in terms of uh, climate change, there is a fundamental local impact. And we have to work on these uh, areas from top to uh, from bottom to top. And as you said initially in your address, this balance that has to exist between nature and the environment. And we needed COVID to make us more aware to realize how nature is rebirth. It's there is like a rebirth of nature all over the world. The pre-COP was held in Costa Rica and you announced one pre-COP for Colombia, the pre-COP on biodiversity. We must underline that Latin America and the Caribbean has 40% of the biodiversity of the world and we have to take care of that heritage. And as you said, 
the uh, missions in our region are very low, particularly countries such as Colombia. But 10 of the most of the countries with more uh, climate risks are in Latin America. So once again, Mr. President, thank you very much. Thank you for your dedication to this topic. I believe that this is the time to push the accelerator, to move forward, to take care of our planet, regardless of where we are, because this affects us all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Luis Alberto. And we also have with us Andrew Steer. Andrew Steer is one of the world leaders from the civil society with a very important institute, the World Resources Institute. Professor Steer, you have been very close to Colombia. You have been extremely concerned about the protection of biodiversity. We have also spoken about our initiative of uh, biodiverse cities. Today we have a panel discussion with the mayor of Barranquilla where we have a beautiful natural park which is the Isla de Salamanca Natural Park and there we want to develop a pilot project for this collective protection of the environment. But you have been one of the leaders of that beautiful project, uh, Colombia Heritage, uh, working to gather public and private resources. And I would like to summarize in one question, one concept, Professor Steer. You have been one of the forerunners of nature-based solutions. Now, within this framework of the pandemics and all the adaptation we have to do, my question is, how can we improve the identification and the implementation of these nature-based solutions and I must also ask as a Colombian how to connect those nature-based solutions to the new generation of Colombia heritage. Thank you very much for being with us, Professor. Thank you so much, um, President Duque. What a very great honor it is to be here and how perfect it is that you and Colombia are hosting this event. Um, as many have said, you know, God has blessed your country greatly and you are now managing it with um, such thoughtfulness. How many other countries have discovered 19 new species in the last year? And one of them is a blind and legless amphibian. I mean, how, how cool is that? Um, and we were so happy, President Duque, earlier this week when the World Resources Institute announced um, our estimates of forests uh, lost for the last year. Um, and Colombia's rate of deforestation fell very, very significantly. Um, so thank you for what you're trying to do. I should say that a tropical forest loss worldwide, we're still losing one soccer field every six seconds. So the problem is still very uh, severe indeed. Thank you also for your international leadership at a time when quite frankly, we don't have enough international cooperation in the world right now, and whether it's your work with the Letitia Pact or elsewhere, thank you so much. I also wanted to uh, thank uh, Minister Schultz for what Germany is doing and what you did with the Petersburg Dialogue and just your recent budget, how you're building back better and investing uh, serious resources in shifting the paradigm. Um, and thank you, Inga, for organizing the whole thing. We really love working with the United Nations um, Environment Program. Um, you mentioned earlier, Pr uh, President Duque, the biodiverse cities, um, uh, which you inaugurated. Um, it's a terrific idea. In some ways, it's the most modern way of thinking about the environment. Essentially, cities have been extracting um, from, from forests. And the whole point of this is to change the calculus totally and change the hearts of the people and change the bank accounts of the corporations uh, change the way universities think about research. And so we're delighted to work with you on that. You asked also what we're learning, what the research agenda is. Just since the first World Environment Day, we've learned so much. Let me just suggest a few things which now, some of which sound obvious, um, but they certainly weren't obvious when we had the first uh, World Environment Day. First, we used to believe there was a big trade-off between protecting the environment and economic development. We now know that is not true. Smart environmental policies, they drive greater economic efficiency, they drive new technologies, 
and they lower risk. And those three things together are a very powerful forcer of new technologies, greater competitiveness, more jobs, um, and a much better future. And, and you in Colombia, for example, with the Food and Land Use Alliance are doing remarkable things, advancing this um, understanding. A second thing that we've learned is that um, exponential problems cannot be solved by incremental solutions. It's nice having small changes in environmental policies, but the whole pressure is now so great um, from human activity that we actually need something more systemic. I mean, just think since the first World Environment Day in 1972, you know, we've had nearly 4 billion new people added to the world's population. Take a longer term perspective, in the last century, the world uh, uh, economic footprint increased 20 times. And if we keep, keep growing at 3%, this decade, this century, we'll have another 20 times. So in two centuries, that's 20 times 20, that's 400 times the economic human footprint. That cannot be addressed by incremental change. And that's why we need system-wide change in our energy systems, in our food systems, in our manufacturing systems. Um, in, our, in our consumption systems, in the way we develop our cities and so on. And it's been such a pleasure working with you, um, uh, uh, Mr. President, and also with others on this panel precisely to work on those. A third thing we've learned is that we mustn't put these problems in buckets. We mustn't think of there's biodiversity, there's climate, there's the ocean, and then there's social problems. Actually, it turns out that the same drivers that are causing plastic in the ocean are actually causing loss of habitat in the forest and also causing uh, climate change. So whether it's plastics, whether it's the loss of forests because of commodities, or whether it's, uh, whether it's climate change, it's the same set of issues. And that's why, Inga, thank you for making the title of this, it's time for nature. We need to be thinking of nature and protecting um, that. The fourth thing we've learned is that this is all about people. Now, this should this sounds obvious at one extent, but actually it hasn't been for most of the environmental movement's life. It is the disenfranchised, the poor, that are most affected by environmental problems. And it is often those same people that have the best ideas, especially in indigenous areas, for the solutions. And so social policy, environmental policy, are not two separate things. I should say that I'm sitting in Washington, D.C. right now, and over the last few days, we've had, you know, very, very strong protests um, against racism. What's that got to do with the discussion today? It's part of that same inequity. It is those that are disempowered and poor that get the worst quality water, that live downwind, that suffer most from climate change. And we need to repent as an environmental movement. We need to be doing much more engaged on that. And the final lesson I would suggest um, in terms of these big things that we've learned, whether through the research community or whether through practical just experience around the world, is that the world is riskier than we thought. This pandemic is clearly you know, a showstopper in terms, I hope, of the old way of doing business. We have learned that actually we are much more vulnerable than we thought. And the safety systems that we thought were there actually aren't there to protect us. What does that imply for us in the environmental movement? What does it imply for the leaders that we have here today? It implies that we need to really shift the way we plan. For the last 100 years of so-called modern planning, we've assumed that the past is a good predictor of the future. And therefore, our plans have been straight lines or smooth curves. We've been maximizing averages, and we now know that they aren't smooth curves and straight lines. We're going to see a lot more jagged edges. And that means we need to plan very differently. We need to think about, we need to think about how we manage risk. And coming out of this pandemic, we see, albeit very, very tragic, great opportunities to build back better. We're about to have the largest public expenditure program in the history of the world, 10 to $20 trillion. And as many other speakers have said, how wonderful that would be if we could use that not just to restart, but as Professor Klaus Schwab said, to reset the global economy. So it's time for nature. Thank you very much.
future. Thank you for your comments, Professor Andrews. We have here with us our Minister of the Environment, Dr. Ricardo Lozano, who has been working in many of these initiatives. And I would like, Mr. Minister, to ask you two things, very simple things. The first one, how is Colombia making progress in terms of its goals to accomplish those nature-based uh, solutions? And my second question, which I want to correlate to what this panel and this very important day is, where Colombia is hosting the World Environment Day, and it has to do with the messages, the news that we would like to share from our country. First, in terms of the cooperation with the United Kingdom that is now contributing with over 60 million pounds for many of these projects and initiatives. And the second point is the role that Colombia is taking as the leader on these uh, uh, panel by UNEP for regional energy transition, acknowledging the significant progress of our country. And the third one, which I must mention as well, is the implementation and the development of Colombia heritage. Minister, you have the floor. Thank you very much. I want to start with two very important words. I want to start speaking about confidence, trust, and solidarity. Our national development plan, Pact for Colombia, Pact for Sustainability, two years ago when we began building it, we began working from the different territories, thinking about nature-based solutions, solutions based on ecosystems, based on our communities, and the knowledge of our ancestors and the ethnic indigenous peoples. We have over 115 ethnic uh, peoples in our country, according to the Department of Statistics, and over 65 languages. And through these exercises of translating this development plan for all of them, we are making big strides. You just mentioned a portfolio of nature-based solutions. 347 projects have been identified with the National Planning Department. And I would say that 90 of these projects belong to the agricultural sector, sustainable agriculture. 50 of these projects belong to the food sector and 50 of those projects belong to the tourism sector based on nature. And we also have the participation of the energy sector. One very important program you have launched is forestry economy, that goal of recovering 300,000 hectares that will increase uh, employment opportunities in the rural areas. Uh, people and our farmers yeah, and people in the fields have not uh, locked down during these pandemics. They have continued working. So this development plan has four pillars. So the economic sectors, and I won't repeat the results you already mentioned recently, but let me tell you something very important which is our green business, green markets. We have increased the demand. Uh, we have over 2,000 green businesses uh, set up uh, and registered with the Ministry of the Environment. We also established a link, a website, so that any citizen may have access to that web page of the Ministry of the Environment with 1,200 green markets that you may access to get your products, uh, medicine, uh, cleaning supplies, all kinds of things. And we also have the ability to develop sustainable business plans with the participation of youth. Over 15% of these new enterprises are initiatives of uh, young people and also environmental education. This is another important goal we are working on with uh, Ministry Minister Maria Victoria, our Minister for Education. We are creating sustainable schools schools from early childhood until to uh, until today we are delivering weekly classes conveying all of these environmental uh, information this is a big effort because we want all of this information to reach the most vulnerable communities and uh, 
Another point I would like to mention regarding these goals is CONASA, the National Environmental Health Council. From that council, we are coordinating all the actions of the health of ecosystems versus human health. Never before we had such a clear idea that by degrading our ecosystems, we were increasing our vulnerability to differing diseases. And that's why all the municipalities in our territory are creating their own municipal committees uh, to ensure drinking water to all citizens in order to reduce the risk of contagion, uh, uh, waste management to prevent infections uh, and we are working together with over 33 regional uh, corporations and our flora and our fauna protection and conservation uh, we have a protection program for our species which are uh, in uh, tourist centers, we are uh, taking care of the zoos, for instance, as well, and botanic uh, gardens and uh, greenhouses. All of these activities are clearly described in our webpage. And to conclude, Mr. Uh, President, I would like to mention that the adaptation based on nature will continue to be our priority following your leadership to conserve producing and to produce conserving. We are all being protected by our nature and we should continue to produce respecting nature. We are generating uh, employment opportunities in uh, different uh, farming opportunities. And uh, of course, as you have all mentioned, this is the time for nature. So we will see the results in the following video, Mr. President. Superamos la tendencia histórica de los últimos cinco años en el trámite de licencias ambientales de la Autoridad Nacional de Licencias Ambientales cumpliendo plazos legales, pasando del 75.8% en el 2018 al 88.52% a diciembre de 2019. En el 2019 se evidenció una reducción del 10% de la deforestación, pasando de 219.973 hectáreas deforestadas en el 2017 a 197.159 hectáreas. Comparado con la tendencia estimada del crecimiento para el año 2018, representó una reducción del 17%. En cuatro de las cinco regiones del país disminuyó la deforestación. Amazonía, Andina, Caribe y Pacífico. Cerca de 3.000 familias campesinas de la Amazonía beneficiadas con 16 proyectos agroambientales en reconversión ganadera, caucho, cacao y productos no maderables que firmaron acuerdos de conservación en 96.925 hectáreas. 17.200 familias indígenas de la Amazonía, beneficiadas con la implementación de 36 proyectos de gobernanza, economía sostenible, mujer y familia. Reducción acumulada de 11.73 millones de toneladas de dióxido de carbono equivalente mediante la reducción de la deforestación y la implementación de la estrategia de reducción de gases efecto invernadero y de desarrollo bajo en carbono. Lanzamiento e implementación de la primera Estrategia Nacional de Economía Circular de América Latina en 19 departamentos. Se suscribieron de 16 pactos y 7 mesas regionales, gestionando más de 475 mil toneladas de residuos peligrosos y especiales sujetos a gestión postconsumo. Firma del Pacto de Leticia por la Amazonía con los jefes de Estado de Brasil, Bolivia, Ecuador, Guyana, Perú y Surinam. Gestionamos y logramos recursos de cooperación internacional por más de 500 millones de dólares para proyectos que impulsen el Pacto por la Sostenibilidad de Colombia enfocado a la lucha contra la deforestación, el impulso a la economía circular y a la economía forestal. 
con el apoyo de las corporaciones autónomas regionales para el cumplimiento de la meta de restauración, hemos sembrado aproximadamente 34 millones de árboles nativos en el territorio nacional. Lanzamiento de la Estrategia Nacional de Calidad del Aire y la promulgación de la ley por medio de la cual se promocionan los vehículos eléctricos y cero emisiones. Ratificación del Convenio de Minamata sobre el Mercurio y lanzamiento del Plan Sectorial Ambiental de Mercurio. Colombia adoptó el Acuerdo Regional sobre el Acceso a la Información, la Participación Pública y el Acceso a la Justicia en Asuntos Ambientales en América Latina y el Caribe, denominado Acuerdo de Escazú. 1958 Negocios Verdes Verificados y Vinculados a los Programas Regionales de Negocios Verdes. 215 mil hectáreas acumuladas bajo esquemas de pagos por servicios ambientales e incentivos a la conservación, beneficiando cerca de 13 mil familias. Promoción e impulso de la bioeconomía a través de la firma de 101 contratos de acceso a recursos genéticos y sus productos derivados. Aquí vemos. Here. We see our commitment as a country facing climate change, but especially having a proactive agenda looking towards the future. I want to thank Inga for her participation in this panel, Minister Schultz, Professor Schwab, Luis Alberto Moreno, Dr. Andrew Schreer, Minister Ricardo Lozano. And when I would like to close this space once again thanking for so many efforts that allow us to strengthen this agenda in the World Environment Day. I want to reiterate, as I was saying to Mr. Lozano, that contribution of the UK of more than 60,000 pounds, 60,000 million pounds. I also value the contribution we have had from the IDB, the World Resources Institute, the Paulson Institute, so that Herencia Colombia can continue to grow as a fundamental program to protect biodiversity and the awareness of protecting biodiversity. But I also want to highlight today the multilateral world that leads us to have in Colombia an agenda of multi-purpose cadaster where having the cadaster layers uh, is used to harmonize cadaster with the protection of the environment with a territorial organization plan, with PONCAS, uh, with or organization of basins, water basins, and with the protection of the special areas in our country. I also want to highlight that one of the big conclusions is that Colombia has to move forward with a collective agenda, a comprehensive agenda, energetic transition, protection of ecosystem, facing and reducing deforestation, reforesting the country, not only as I was mentioning of our goal of 180 million trees, but also including 120 million trees of commercial forest development and also applied research and research that allows us to work with ancestral communities, even in the development of our Leticia Agreement. But beyond these initiatives that belong to our country, associated with many others, I want to end this panel once again with a message for the World Environment Day. Our world is being affected by climate change, and climate change has been produced many times because for decades we preferred the topic of the development without considering sustainability. Today, during the World Environment Day, we remember that day of 1972, when we coined the term of sustainable development in the surroundings of an important world conversation. Today, we also remember 1992, when we signed that cycling and reutilizing, produce, uh, preserving and preserve producing, how we can protect our species, the ones that are more threatened, and how we can find solutions, nature-based solutions. Because the moment that we're living in now, 
nature is speaking to us. Mother Earth is speaking to us. Initiatives such as uh, the one of the UNEP, uh, the Ministry of Environment of Germany initiative, such as the Great Reset, the Great Reset uh, to rethink of ourselves, to redefine, to move forward more strongly, to defend the environment, to work with financing tools, with multilateral organisms such as the IDB. These are conclusions that come out of this panel. But I would say that the most important conclusion is that with our hands in our hearts, we need to understand that it is time for nature. It's time for nature. And this is the closing of uh, the session for the World Environment Day. And we invite you to be connected to this platform because throughout the day today, we will have very important panels with experts from different places around the world that invite us, that motivate us so that we all defend nature. Thank you very much. And as a Colombian, as the president of Colombia, it is great pride for our country to be the host of this World Environment Day. We want to thank the President of the Republic of Colombia and all our special guests for their participation in this space under the framework of the World Environment Day. Next, we will transmit the messages of the representatives of the leader programs. We have an incredible opportunity to create entirely new sustainable industries, investing in nature as the true engine of our economy. The current global crisis has disrupted every aspect of our lives, but it has also presented us with an extraordinary opportunity, a chance to reset and accelerate efforts to improve the state of our world. Changing our current trajectory will require bold and imaginative action, together with determination and decisive leadership. In order to secure our future and to prosper, we need to evolve our economic model, putting accelerate people and planet at the heart of global value creation. If there is one critical lesson we have to learn from this crisis, we need to put nature at the heart of how we operate. We are on the verge of catalytic breakthroughs. In order to secure our future and to prosper, we need to evolve our economic model within the framework of putting people and function. We need nothing short of a paradigm shift. If One that inspires action at revolutionary levels and pace, the territories we, acknowledge that we, are part of we simply nature. cannot waste the any more time. The only limit is our willingness history, to guarantee act. of physical and cultural survival. So we emphasize day in and day out that the earth and does not belong to mine, to act, but mine can belongs to the earth. So we want to urge governments private companies, public institutions, the academy and the community to come together and to become the guardians of the earth. My name is Carmen Vines, and I want to share with you my ideas, because this is the time of nature. 
Es por eso que reafirmamos día a día que la tierra no es del hombre, sino el hombre de la tierra. Y hoy, en el Día Mundial del Medio Ambiente, queremos hacer un llamado a los estados, a los gobiernos, empresas privadas, instituciones públicas, a cadenas y comunidades, a que nos unamos todos y nos convirtamos en guardianes de la tierra. Welfare, economy and adaptation to climate change. Hola, amigos, Art Ricardo in its Pires, different manifestations will always be a very effective road to revalue and reconnect us emotionally with nature. Ante el deterioro tan marcado de es necesario volver a reconectarnos a que nos y unamos todos y nos convirtamos en guardianes de la tierra diversidad y reconocer todas las contribuciones que nos dan para el bienestar hola amigos soy carlos la cultura la economía y la adaptación para el cambio climático el arte y sus diferentes manifestaciones siempre serán una vía muy efectiva para revalorizar y reconectarnos emocionalmente con la naturaleza Mes chers amis, à l'heure où je vous parle, il est encore difficile de savoir quelles seront les conséquences structurelles de la pandémie du Covid-19 qui frappe le monde. Il est possible d'ores et déjà d'en tirer une certitude. Nous avons désormais conscience de notre fragilité. De manière dramatique, cette crise nous rappelle combien nous sommes vulnérables face à une menace invisible. Elle nous rappelle combien il nous faut être prudents, écouter les alertes et les recommandations que nous adressent les scientifiques. Il nous rappelle que nul n'est à l'abri de menaces qui sont globales, mais que chacun peut contribuer à combattre avec un besoin d'entraide par-delà les frontières et à travers les continents. Pour cette Journée mondiale de l'environnement, je souhaite vivement que nous puissions tirer les enseignements de cette crise et des changements très rapides qu'elle a suscités. La restriction de nos déplacements a permis de réduire très sensiblement nos émissions de gaz à effet de serre. Le développement des échanges numériques a fait reculer de manière spectaculaire certaines pollutions. L'arrêt de nombreuses activités humaines a engendré quasiment partout une reconquête de la biodiversité et notamment de la faune. Nous mesurons donc aujourd'hui très concrètement ce que pourraient être demain les effets positifs de changements voulus et non subis, plus importants encore. Des changements que nous pouvons accomplir comme l'ont été les bouleversements rapides de nos modes de vie. Des changements qu'il est urgent d'accomplir pour notre climat, pour notre planète, pour sa biodiversité, y compris dans ses océans. Des changements qui passent par la mobilisation de chacun, par nos choix, par nos gestes quotidiens. Pour que la crise actuelle débouche sur un monde meilleur, nous avons besoin de la mobilisation de tous. Nous avons besoin de votre mobilisation. Je vous remercie. I'm pleased to be with you to celebrate the World's Environment Day. And I congratulate President Duque and Colombia as this year's host under these very unusual circumstances. Two years ago, I had the privilege to visit Leticia deep inside Colombia's Amazon forests. It was an unforgettable experience. Colombia has taken important steps to combat deforestation and protect Colombia's invaluable biodiversity. And I'm proud of Norway's partnership with Colombia to reduce deforestation. Norway's International Climate and Forest Initiative will continue through the next decade and support countries that succeed in halting forest loss. Protecting rainforests is essential for meeting our climate and biodiversity goals and indeed most of the sustainable development goals. Forest destruction can also pose a risk of pandemics as animals are exposed to humans. In the coming years of recovery, we must solve multiple crises at once. The pandemic, the economy, the climate and nature. Norway looks forward to working with all of you in the preparations for the UN Biodiversity Conference and as president of the next UN Environmental Assembly. Its team is strengthening actions for nature to achieve the sustainable development goals. It could not be more timely. Hello, 
I'm Carlos Alvarado, President of Costa Rica. The world is currently facing three severe interlinked crises, loss of biodiversity, climate change, and global health pandemic. In these challenging times, we must stress the importance of nature-based solutions to lead the way for an environmentally conscious economy recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. As part of this systemic approach for recovery, Costa Rica, alongside with France, is leading the High Ambition Coalition for Nature and People, a coalition of like-minded countries that aims to protect 30% of the world's marine and terrestrial ecosystems by 2030. To achieve this goal, we need an ambitious post-2020 biodiversity framework that will help us halt biodiversity loss and thus guarantee our livelihood. It is of paramount importance to rapidly increase the protections of our oceans, which are essential for our survival. Oceans account for the largest carbon deposits of our planet and play a crucial role in regulating global temperatures, yet only 7% of the world's oceans is protected. Costa Rica is convinced that an increase in biodiversity and oceans protection is key element to achieve 1.5 degrees goal set in the Paris Agreement. Our efforts on biodiversity, oceans and climate action need to be accompanied by the greening of all financial flows, private and public, domestic and international, to make them consistent with a pathway towards low greenhouse gas emissions and transform them into a true tool for climate resilient development. On the World Environment Day, we call on all our partners to join us in leading by example and implementing ambitious and innovative actions for environmental protection. Let me start by thanking Colombia and their partner Germany for hosting World Environment Day. Last week, it was agreed that the COP26 UN Climate Conference will take place on the 1st to the 12th of November, 2021. COP26 can be a moment where the world unites behind a fairer, greener recovery from the effects of COVID-19. A recovery which delivers for our people and our planet. In the lead up to COP26, we have identified five areas which need particular attention. Clean energy, clean transport, nature-based solutions, adaptation and resilience, and finance, which helps deliver our objectives. With COP26 and the Convention on Biological Diversity, COP15, both in 2021, next year is said to be a critical year for nature. We cannot meet the goals of the Paris Agreement or adapt to the effects of climate change without restoring, protecting and enhancing our natural world. Nature-based solutions could provide around a third of the cost-effective mitigation needed by 2030 to stabilise temperatures to below 2 degrees. They can help us adapt to extreme weather, from tropical forests that regulate global temperature to urban green spaces which reduce flood risk. And they provide vital livelihoods. A global transition to sustainable food and land use could generate 120 million new jobs in rural communities. So today, we're announcing £64 million to support Colombia in tackling deforestation, reducing global greenhouse gases and creating sustainable jobs in rural areas affected by COVID-19 and conflict. This announcement comes a year after we signed the uk Colombia Partnership for Sustainable Growth. It will protect crucial forests and support the communities that rely on them for their livelihoods. We're proud of our relationship with Colombia and I would like to thank President Duque for his personal commitment to protecting the Amazon rainforest. Ahead of COP26, we'll work with Colombia and our partners around the world to increase public and private financial flows to protect and restore nature, to protect the world's oceans and champion marine ecosystems such as coral and mangroves, to build on the Just Transition Initiative towards productive, resilient agriculture. This will bring together the world's major food producing and consuming countries to agree practical steps to 
promote sustainable trade and development. Whether we live in the South, the North, the East or the West, we share one life-giving but fragile planet. We will work tirelessly to raise ambition on climate change, and I look forward to welcoming you to COP26 next year. Namaskaram. My greetings and uh, congratulations on this uh, World Environment Day for nations coming together and taking up this cause. It's wonderful to see that the leaders of the world are coming together to take charge of our environmental future. We are at a critical juncture in the history of this planet. The decisions that we take now will impact all future generations. There is only one problem on this planet, the human being, the only source of ecological crisis the planet faces today. We are causing this damage by functioning in an unconscious and compulsive manner. So it is only when multifarious activities of our societies move into a conscious mode that our activities can be oriented towards a solution. We have been the source of the problem, we can also become the source of the solution. In this context, creating a conscious planet is the most important goal. We are launching this movement called Conscious Planet. With this, we want to bring more awareness to ecological issues in the population and make ecological issues into electoral issues. It is important in the coming decade, across the world, every democratic society, it is important that ecology becomes a major aspect of electoral politics. I congratulate the President of Colombia and the Government of Colombia for showing such resoluteness and initiative towards working for the environmental health of the planet. May this World Environment Day augur a beginning for a conscious mode of functioning and a conscious planet. Thank you very much. My best wishes and blessings for the success of this endeavor. Hey, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo están todos? Soy Juanes y este Día Mundial del Medio Ambiente celebremos la biodiversidad. Yo celebro la de mi país, Colombia, que es el más biodiverso por metro cuadrado a nivel mundial. Así que salvar el planeta y sus riquezas naturales es fácil si cada uno de nosotros pone de su parte. De lo contrario, es nuestra responsabilidad también. Así que es hora de actuar por la naturaleza. Un abrazo. ¿Qué tal mi gente? Soy J Balvin. Llegó la hora de la naturaleza y porque necesitamos a la naturaleza más de lo que ella nos necesita a nosotros. Un abrazo. Thank you. Damos por concluida la ceremonia de apertura del Día Mundial del Medio Ambiente, agradeciendo la participación de los invitados especiales. Y les recordamos a nuestra audiencia en redes que pueden permanecer conectados para seguir el desarrollo de los demás segmentos de la agenda del Día, del, Mun del Día Mundial del Medio Ambiente a través de la página web www.worldenvironmentday.global la cual estará disponible con su programación virtual hasta las 5 y 45 de la tarde hora Colombia. Queremos agradecerle al canal institucional por esta transmisión. Feliz día para todos.